So when you when you given a flow chart and you need to determine the output, we then create something that's called a trace table. Tracing means we go going to go through the step by step. We're going to go through all of this, all of these symbols step by step, and we're going to determine what's happening at each stage. We're going to determine what's happening. So to create a trace table, the first thing you do is identify your variables. What variables do I have here? Let's look. I've got a start. That's not a variable. That's just the start of the flow chart. I've got count equals zero. So that is a placeholder. That's count. So I've created a column for count in my trace table because I want to understand how that placeholder is going to change. I come to the next statement and it's count. It's the same variable, so I'm not going to put it down again. You put it down only once. And then I'm looking at this statement here and that's a parallelogram. So from yesterday's lesson, we know that a parallelogram is used for input or output. But when I look at this very carefully, print, print means that is output. So I you always have a column for output. And every time you have a decision box like this, a diamond shape, you must have a column for your diamond shape decision. And in that column, you've got two options, true and you've got an option false. So in in this column, you're going to find I'm going to put down either true or false, depending on the condition. So let's do a trace here and let's see what happens. I'm hoping that some of you have looked at the statement and said. That is an accumulator. That is an accumulator. You were able to identify an accumulator. An accumulator is just something that you repeat on both sides. Uh, of the right hand side and the left hand side, both sides of the equal to sign. And with an accumulator, you need to give it a starting value. You need to initialize. So this is where the accumulator is being initialized. So guys, let's answer the question. Determine the output for the following flowchart. So you start at the beginning. Yeah, let's label these so you can follow the steps. So each box, I've got a number. So when I talk about number one, it means I'm at this box here. Number two, I'm at the next box. So we start. I'm at number one. What happens? Count is zero. Well, that's easy. Let's put it into my trace table. Count is zero. From number one, I go to the next arrow, number two. I'd always follow your arrows. You can't go backward, obviously. You're going to go forward. So go to the next box. Count equals count plus one. What's the current value of count? Count is zero plus one. Zero plus one. Zero plus one is equal to one. And that value is stored back into count. So count now no longer has the value zero. It now has the value one because it accumulated in box number two. Then we go to the next arrow, which takes us to box three. Print, print means output. Print number, that's my message. So we're going to print the message number. And we're going to print the placeholder count. So what is in the placeholder count? One. So it's going to print number one. Count has the value one. So we finished with number three, that was output. Let's go to number four. Number four is a decision. Is count less than 10? Well, let's, let's check. Count is one. Is one less than 10? Is that true or is that false? One is less than 10, so that is true. And because that is true, I follow the true branch and I now go in that direction. So let's follow the arrows from box four. The condition is true. 
I follow the arrows, I go to the top, and it takes me back to this point here, and I'm coming down to box two. So what happens at box two? Count equals count. What's the current value of count? The current value of count is one. So now it's one plus one. And one plus one is two. So the value two is now put into count. Value two is now put into count. And from box two, I go to box three, which is output. Print count. So print number. So that's my message. Number and print count. Count is two, so it's going to print number two. From box three, I go to number four, box four. That's a decision is count less than 10. Let's check. Count is two. Is two less than 10? That's true. Two is less than 10. So because it's true, I follow the true. I follow the direction of true, which takes me back to the top, to box number two. Count equals count. What's the value of count now? Count is two. So two plus one, two, count is two plus one equals, equals three. So count has the value three. You may be wondering, why am I striking out of the value each time? Understand that count is a placeholder. Count is a placeholder. So if count had the value two in it, remember that a placeholder is a variable that can only store one value. And if now it gets the value three, then the two is lost. And now we have the value three. So that is why I'm striking off the values each time. So count is now three at box two. Let's go to box three. Print, which is output. Message is number and print the value of count, which is three. I'm hoping at this stage you are getting the idea, right? So from box three, we go to box four. Count less than 10. What's count? Count is three. Is three less than 10? True. Three is less than 10, so you follow the true pathway. And that takes you back to box two. Count equals count, which is now three. Three plus one is four at box two. We go to box three. Print, which is output. There's my output. Number, and it's going to print count, which is four. So print, and it's going to say four. Back to box four, count less than 10. Count is four. Is four less than 10? True, four is less than 10. Now I'm going to start going a bit faster. Four is less than 10. We go back to box two, count equals count plus one. Accumulator, take its current value plus one. Take its current value four plus one. So count becomes five. Print number, which is my message print number and it's going to print the value of count which is five and then we go to box four count less than ten is five less than ten that's true follow the true branch back to box two count equals count plus one count is five plus one count is going to become six print number so it's going to print number six. Back to box four. Is count less than 10? True. Go back to box two. Can you see the repetition that's taking place? This is repetition. Count equals count plus one. From six, six plus one, seven. So it's going to go from box two to box three. Print number it's going to say number and it's going to print count, which is seven. Box four is seven less than 10. 
That is true. 7 is less than 10. Follow the true branch back up to number 2. Count equals count plus 1. We are now at 8. Box 3. It's going to print number 8. Box 4 is 8 less than 10. That's true. Follow and go back to box 2. Count equals count plus 1. 9. Box 3. Print. Number 9. Number 9. At box 3, number 9. Box 4 is 9 less than 10. Start paying sharp attention now. Is 9 less than 10? True. Something's going to happen. So, so pay sharp attention. Is 9 less than 10? True. Go back to the top. Box 2. Count equals count plus 1. And count becomes 9 plus 1, which is 10. Print number and count. So it's going to print the message, number, and the value count, which is 10. Test your condition and now listen carefully. Is 10 less than 10? 10 is not less than 10. 10 is equal to 10. So it is now false. And because it's false, I now follow the pathway of false. And now it's going to go to my stop. So as long as this condition was true, as long as that condition was true, we were in a loop. There was a repetition taking place. The loop stops when the condition becomes false. And then you end, you reach the end of the flowchart. 